hey! <laughs> Hello, everyone! It's time for a light switch rave. <laughs> Wait, it has the system blinky modes. is down. system is down. <laughs> the cheat is grounded. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to Prop Live Q&A. It's your weekly prop and costume making Q&A session with me, Bill. I'm regularly here, but today we're joined by my wife, Brittany. Hello! And uh, the two of us are going to answer your prop and costume technique questions. And we're just going to fart around for the next hour or so. Uh, today's a special day. Is it? Because it's Brittany's birthday! Oh, Hooray! yeah! <laughs> Hooray! And we're celebrating with tiny sodas. Yes. Maybe some beer later. There but... will be beer later. Yeah. But cheers. Another successful trip around the sun. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're celebrating it with you. <laughs> with with our wonderful prop with tarts. With the only people that care. That's not <laughs> true. Uh, we'll, we're going to go hang out with my brother and my parents uh, tomorrow. Have a, a proper party. In fact, that's why we weren't streaming. We did not do a live stream from the shop this week because we were hanging out with my parents. Mm-hmm. Who just flew in uh, from New York and they're... Really just here to see my brother, his wife, and their two babies. But we got to hang out a little bit, too. Aw, thank you, everyone. You're all so nice. Yeah. Thank you for all the birthday happy wishes. So, anyway, we're going to hang out for a little while, talk about what we've been working on. If you're joining us live, and you've got a question you'd like us to answer today about prop or costume making, uh, go to punishprops.com slash live. Fill out the form there, and then it will send that over to Brittany, and she'll collect the questions. Yeah, the reason I'm looking over here is because I have a laptop. It's not that I'm ignoring you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's that I'm just gathering all the information. I'm also reading the chat because you guys are awesome. I get distracted yeah. by the awesome chat. So, uh, also, if you're watching this after the fact and you want to submit a question during the week, that's fine. If you want answers right away then I recommend you head on over to the Prop Tarts Facebook group. That looks like this. 4,000 people strong, which is amazing. That's awesome. And everyone's over there sharing their super cool projects. So Rick here made a little something from the new Blade Runner movie. I think is awesome. Looks like it's actual wood, too. That's so cool. Uh, another Blade Runner thing. Another... <laughs> Blade Runner's so hot right now. It's so hot. Uh... Oh! oh what is that? That Man. is so cool. That is so rad. Man. So if you have uh, something that you want some in-depth help on and you want to access the hive mind of the prop charts, head on over there, post a question during the week, or if you want to just discuss stuff with other awesome people, or if you just want to see what other people are working on or show off what you're working on, go over to the prop charts of Punished Props on Facebook. Join the group and, uh, yeah. Make some friends. Yeah, especially if you're trying to figure out how to start your costume, kind of like what techniques you want to use to start building something new. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely ask the prop tarts. Uh, they, they're more than happy to yep. help you out with you know their thoughts and techniques. But if you have a question for us today while we're live, like if you're you have a specific question about molding and casting, or a specific question about foam armor or prop making, or three D printing, or three D printing. Or any of the projects that we've worked on, if you want to know a little bit more about those, I'd be happy to share. About so, ab- How about questions about awesome traffic yeah. signal things? For directing airplanes into our driveway. Yeah. Well, this is also used for, like, intersections, for, like, roads and yeah. stuff. I'm going to go out and buy C batteries yeah. for this, by the way. It's ridiculous. What well, uses C batteries anymore? Mm-hmm. But it's it's good. It's got, like, if we ever need to do lighting, like on a prop or something. A tiny lightsaber. Now we, ha- now we have these. Uh, also, yeah. So, yeah, if we have projects, Brittany's finishing up the uh, sweeper bot costume, which the costume videos are all done. Mm-hmm. There's one more video on the broom, which I did, so that'll be out soon. Uh, I just recently painted my Blade Runner gun back here, and I recently did an Airsoft Destiny mod right there. Space guns, what? So if you have questions <laughs> about those projects, please feel free to send them our way. What else have I done recently? I, a lot. You've uh, done a lot. I have. <laughs> uh, what else do we have going on here? Uh, well, next week. Uh, next week's BlizzCon. BlizzCon. 
I am so excited. Yes. So we did not go... Uh, what was it? We did not go to TwitchCon uh, because we're planning to go to BlizzCon. And yeah. we can't go to all the cons. No, there's too many. And because money is a finite resource and time, Spe- mostly. Speaking of TwitchCon, though, the costume contest looked like it was really cool. We watched it oh live. Oh, my goodness. I was so... Yeah. The costumes were amazing. Yeah. And a, I know a lot of our awesome uh, prop tarts were there. Uh, Nick took third place. Mm-hmm. So I don't think he's in the chat right now, but Modulus Props got third place, which is well deserved. And Stephen K. Smith got first place. Yeah. Well deserved as well. All of them. <laughs> I, I do not envy the judges. Like, they were all really good. Mm hmm. And it was so neat to see them all walk out on stage. Um, you can still go watch the cosplay contest. Um, it was all streamed on the twitch.tv slash twitch channel. So they have it probably archived or highlighted yeah. somewhere. I'll link what I find um, in the description down below because it's it's got to exist Props somewhere. Props is here. Hey! Yay! Congratulations, Con- Nick. Congratulations. Yeah. Well done, man. Uh... We, were, we were cheering from the couch. <laughs> Yonalith is curious what we're going to wear. Now, I'm going to wear my Business Reaper again. I'm painting up the gun that I got from Jordan over at Henchman Studios. Uh, we have something else we're working on. We haven't spilled the beans on it yet because it might not get done. But we have a thing. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah, we have a prop that we might get done. We might. Um, it might happen. Yeah, I don't know if I'll be actually wearing a costume, but there might be a prop involved. Yeah, sorry, we're going to... Yeah. Well, I don't want to get the prop tarts hopes up, no. you know, like like and they'll expect to see it there. So we'll see. We'll see if it gets done. But the business reaper will be fun because you'll yeah. you'll just have one of the guns and yep. I guess you'll have your cell phone in your other hand and wear a business outfit with a mask. Mm-hmm. And need oh we need to do something fun for your cell phone. Like we're trying to figure it out. Yeah. I think it should it should ha- it should say uh bye bye bye. Yeah, I think that's great. Maybe a B-U-Y, maybe U a- Y, not like Backstreet Boys, like B Y E. Yes. <laughs> yes. There's, let's be clear about that. Yeah. Maybe we can get you a briefcase or something oh, so you can great. you can stow your gun if you need to. So that's BlizzCon. Uh, we won't have this show on Thursday next week. Uh, we will be at BlizzCon. Oh, right. Yeah. But we will try and stream on Tuesday, uh, which will be the day before we leave. And Oh, Matter Hackers. Holy crap. If you're at... If you're, um, oh right, <laughs> we're gonna be at Matter Hackers. If you're in Southern California, one week from yesterday on Wednesday, we're going to be at Matter Hackers doing a meetup thing, and I'm stalling <laughs> so I can find the link to it. <laughs> uh, it would be. It's the first of November. I'm on their website right now trying to figure it out. Oh. Oh, yeah. They have other... Yeah, they do uh, meetups. Uh, so if you're in the that area of California, Matter Hackers will do meetups every once in a while. And we're going to go to this one. That's also Halloween. So we could do a Halloween stream or something. Maybe. <laughs> maybe I can't find it. Maybe make a foam pumpkin. A foam pumpkin would be a lot of fun. They probably linked it on their Facebook page. Uh, that's a good idea. This is something I should definitely have the information on. I forgot that's why we were heading out early to BlizzCon. I'm like, oh, right. Events. Uh, uh, yeah, Matter Hackers are found cool. It. Found it. Events. Is that it? I hope this is it. There we go. Yeah. You, that's the that, longest link on planet Earth. Can I find get a... Uh, can I get a shorter URL? <laughs> Uh, what if, uh, okay, but basically, Wednesday, 7 to 10, at Matter Hackers. You should just post the stupid long link in the chat. This is a better link. I found a better okay. link. There we go. Cool. Boop. All right. Awesome. Can you put that in the show notes, too? Yes. Thank I you. Can. I'm slacking over here. Not doing my job. Uh, there's going to be costume stuff, and I guess I'm judging a costume contest. Of course uh, you are. Looks like Alicia, aka Vert Vixen's gonna be there. Can I enter the costume contest? Um, I actually, I do, yeah. I thought I'm not gonna have time to do this, but I thought of a casual cosplay, or I guess Halloween costume, yep. a casual Halloween costume to do at Matter Hackers, and I think only Joel would get it, but it would be totally worth it because our buddy Joel's gonna be there too, yes. the 3D printing nerd. 
apparently Frank's going to be there too. Yeah, Frank Ippolito is probably going to be there too, as long as his schedule, schedule works schedule out. Schedule permitting. Yeah, he he's might be there. he's a he's a busy guy. Yeah, he is. But uh, uh, you know, one of Joel's videos that has gone viral is the hairy lion yeah. one. So I was thinking of getting a blue yarn and being the hairy <laughs> lion with just like a nose and whiskers and the blue yarn, and you style it. It's be, a great video if you go watch it on his channel. That would be fantastic. Uh, I could have a hair dryer too. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that is, I think we've covered everything. And uh, we're going to grab some questions. We don't have many. So we might now. Let me check. All right. I might, I might have like billions. So uh, send in your questions. Oh, yeah. I got a bunch we now. Got some questions. Thank you, cool. everyone, for submitting questions. All right. I'm going to dive into this first question here. Brittany's going to start uh, organizing the rest of them. So, uh, and if you're live, punishprops.com slash live where you can submit your questions. Okay, Foundry13 says, how does neoprene compare to latex in regards to durability? If there is a difference in durability, how much or in what ways? Um, so my experience with latex is that so long as you put on a very thick amount of latex, it is nearly indestructible. But it can wear through so and all of this stuff is this is all stuff i learned from my friends uh arty fakes and what they do is they'll brush out a couple of layers of latex rubber let it uh uh to get in all the nooks and crannies and then they'll spray on a few layers and then they'll take the whole thing and they will dunk it in a giant vat now most people including me don't have a giant vat of latex it's like 500 gallons of latex rubber so what I've done is just I spray on many, many layers. Um, I'll probably brush on two and spray on like six or seven more layers. What I found is that in some cases isn't enough. It can still wear through if it's not thick enough. But if you have a nice thick layer of latex, it won't wear through. And it's so flexible, it's so rubbery that it won't break or it can't break. Um, and if it bounces off of stuff or if it folds, yeah, that's... This is slip cast latex that this. Uh, yeah, what kind of latex is is this guy? I don't know specifically, yeah. but it's used for slip casting. Yeah, so but it's the the edge of this is about an eighth of an inch thick, which is really thick, but it's like bulletproof. And if this was outside of a piece of foam, then that would be complete. I say bulletproof. I mean really, really durable. Yeah, that was um Frank Hippolito sculpted yeah. this in a tested video. Yeah. I'll go find that and link it below. It might have been the same video that Bill was in for his District 9 gun. Yeah. So the same thing with neoprene, though, is if you put on a really good thick layer, it's going to be a really tough, durable mm -hmm. bit of rubber on the outside of your, your piece. Uh, where you run into trouble is if you don't get a good thick mm -hmm. amount on there. And that it's, really comes down to having the patience to put like 10 layers on like brushing them on or, or spraying them on if you if you can um but if you do that you're good to go my um mechanist helmet over there is all covered in latex i think i put like seven layers on there and it's pretty it's holding up really well it hasn't worn through anywhere and i don't really treat it all that well <laughs> hey jackie crafts is here yeah, that's the only times I run into problems if there's a lot of area um, where two different armor pieces are touching and there's a lot of friction. Um, any finish will start to wear away. Um, even like, uh, well, I guess I mean if it's like if it's raw plastic, I guess it wouldn't. So if you had like, like two sheets of styrene that were like overlapping each other like on finger joints, um, as long as they didn't have any paint on them, they probably wouldn't you know wear away. But anything with a finish on it, whether it's paint or latex or or neoprene will, you know, start to receive damage over time. Yeah. So if what we found is if you have two pieces that are, are like like two finished faces, like latex or neoprene or, or plastic or whatever it is that are rubbing against one another on your costume, on one of them, glue down some felt uh, so that it's a nice, smooth, sliding surface. And hopefully you can glue it down in a spot where you won't really see it. Uh, and that way it's not going to have all that friction. So felt or um, maybe a piece of vinyl cloth could work. That's what I did on... Actually, I may have a video on that. But I, that's what I did on my mechanist boots. The bottom parts of the boots where it rubbed against the, the shoe started to wear through. So I just... Or velvet. Yes, uh, Jackie uh, 
in the chat is recommending Velvet. Works yeah. for rubbing. Yeah, without that, you were also very squeaky with yeah. your mechanist shoes. Which I kind of liked. That yeah, was it was pretty cute. Uh, this has been the uh, rubber hour yeah. with, or the rubber minute with Bill and Brett. I still feel like I have a lot to learn with latex and neoprene. I also really want to try slip casting. Uh, I mean, creature cast was kind of mainly invented to do masks and plaster molds. Um, and then it turned out to be a lot more useful uh, for different applications, just like latex can be. But I actually want to try, try it in a mold at one point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be really fun. That would be fun. Do some... Yeah. Sculpting and some slip casting. Yeah. Developing cosplays here. What? Good to see you. It's hey. been a while. Hey, it's good to see you. Yay. Uh, let's see. That question came from Foundry13. Thank you very much. Next one comes to us from Joey. He's curious which classes we play in Destiny. Destiny 2, I play a Titan. So do I. We're basically identical <laughs> to striker titans. We just zap everything with lightning. And yeah, we, we pick the double lightning grenades, so we have four lightning just lots grenades. lots of lightning grenades. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty it's phenomenal. Fun. Before Destiny 1, I played a titan, Britt played a hunter. Mm-hmm. That was a good time, but titans are the best ones, so we both did that. <laughs> I like their, their abilities suit me the most. Um, aesthetically, I think in Destiny 2, I like the warlock gear the most, um, but I'm really enjoying playing a titan. Yeah. Because they're unstoppable killing machines. Mm-hmm. I get to punch a lot. I also punch a lot. I have a thing. I can't. I don't know if it's an ability or a piece of gear I have. But if when I punch someone, if they die from it, it automatically recharges my punch. So if I can get a good chain going, I just run around punching dregs to death. Like, <laughs> it's a good time. Yeah. Thank you, Joey. Good. Very important question to ask. James is curious, uh, what slicing software do you use for 3D printing props and what would you recommend? Well, I just printed something on the Ultimaker using Cura, which is Ultimaker's software, but Cura is free and it works for just about any other 3D printer, I think. So I can recommend it, it works pretty well. If I have to do anything that requires a ton of support material, I will use Simplify 3D. Uh, it's harder to recommend Simplify 3D because it's not free, and in fact, it's quite expensive. But um, I had heard so many good things about it when we were using our Dremel 3D printer uh, because the slicing software for the Dremel 3D printer was kind of crap. Yeah, it was very basic, yeah. and even the best quality wasn't very good. So uh, anyway, I got we, we went and bought Simplify 3D, and it improved the quality on the Dremel dramatically. And the support material, they do some voodoo magic with their code to make support material really easy to remove from your prints. So I usually bounce between Cura and Simplify 3D. You can get away with just doing uh, Simplify, or uh, sorry, Cura. People seem to really like Slicer. It's S-L-I-C-3-R, I think. Slicer.org. And I know Prusa has their own version of it that people seem to think is really cool. I've never tried that, but it's worth checking out. Uh, it's free, so might as well give it a go. Um, but for since most of the printing I do is on the uh, Ultimaker, most of the time I'm using Cura, and they go really well hand in hand. So, boop, can recommend. Uh, oh, I also should say we have a Taz or Lulzbot Mini, and they have their own version of Cura, and that's what I use for that guy. Um, that's all set up right now to print uh, Ninja Flex, which is amazing. <laughs> Developing cosplay says it's Brittany's birthday. Yes, it is. And Evil Ted Smith is here. Hey, Ted. Uh, we'll see you soon, buddy. Yeah, we will. So anyway, uh, the um, Lulzbot Mini has Ninja Flex spooled up in it, and I can just go into their version of Cura, pick Ninja Flex with the Flexi Shooter, and it just works perfect. So I like that a lot. I have, a, I have a quick funny story. We were chatting with Joel last night, and he was talking about, like, making 3D printing a thing that he was going to wear, like a little thing. And he's like, yeah, and then I could keep it in, in place by stringing in some Ninja Flex yeah. and tying it off. I'm like, jo- Joel... Just a strand of Ninja yeah. Flex. I was like, you mean elastic? It's just amazing, because, like, for him, like, and that's a totally legit way to do it. And, and that didn't occur to me. His, his main maker background is 3D printing, so he immediately went to Ninja Flex. And I, and I have a 
boatload of elastic in the other room. So I was like, well, I would just use that. But... You got a bunch of cupcakes. Oh, cupcakes. Oh, 25 they're... cupcakes. They're so cute, Mitsula. Thank you. And they're animated. For Brittany's 25th birthday. <laughs> oh, that is... That is very much under the mark. But thank you. Thank you for... Thanks, for... you guys. You guys are so nice. Uh, let's see. That question was from James. I hope that somewhere in there we answered your question, James. Let's grab a question from Lisa in Orlando. Do you have any tips on maintaining symmetry in a complex design when sculpting foam? For example, when sculpting a decorative element like a fleur-de-lis on a piece of armor, it needs to have a left and right symmetry. Ah, uh, boy, this is why I like 3D modeling so much, because you can just turn on a symmetry button and everything mirrors. Could you look up uh, Harrison's um, Soul Calibur shoulder build? It's a blog write-up he did, and I believe, I could be wrong, but I think he talked about that, because in the shoulder it had very much a big symmetrical yeah. scroll work detail, and he's so good about sculpting symmetry stuff. A lot of... Uh, oh. I spelled caliber wrong. Caliber. Where is it? There, there it is. is. Might, he might oh. go over. Oh, there's also the armband, too. Might there be one is. of those. I just like looking through these these blog posts. And he's, he's done these years ago. He's always been yeah. so good about sharing all these awesome techniques. So he drew it on. And... Uh, the uh, two uh, flat on the the former he was going to sculpt it, and then then you can tell if the um, design is symmetrical or not before you start sculpting, and then he just started building it up from there, but at least you could tell that it was close to symmetrical um, before you start sculpting, and then you just kind of eyeball it. The good thing about something like this is you're never really going to look at it straight on, so if it's off a little bit, you're not going to be able to tell. Yeah. That's how I feel like with something I'm working on uh, now is that if I have two sides of a thing, the left and the right, you can't see them both at the same time. So it's like, oh, if they're not quite the same, no one yeah. will know. And the, here's the armband. So yeah, he he uh, did a digital file, a digital like a, a drawing that was mirrored. So it was definitely symmetrical and then sculpted right on top of it just to make sure that it it would line up. I love that armband mold, too, because he molded it flat, and while it's curing, he pulls it out and wraps it around a form, and it cures all the way. Yeah, here it yeah, is. Yeah, that's so rad. So it's poured, and while it's th there... Oh, it, he he wrapped it in the mold. That's great. He wrapped the mold around <laughs> it while it was still green. The cool thing about this, too, is that round armband, you're never going to see either, uh, yeah. either side by itself. So yeah. yeah, and then it goes under the shoulder, you don't even see the, right, all the course. details. So there you go. Cool. Could you uh, add that to the show notes for me? I sure Thank can. You. And so, I now want to. I want to go read through that whole thing again. It's mm -hmm. such a great build. Uh, and then the other thing is just a whole lot of good old fashioned practice, 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 practice. Mm -hmm. uh, let's keep going here. Jack Prop says, "What would you recommend as a good starter three D printer for new users?" So we start to get more and more people asking us about three D printers. Uh, the long and the short of it is that I haven't used very many 3D printers. I've used the Dremel, which was really good, uh, for about $1,000. I've used the Ultimaker, which is really good, for about $2,500 or $2,000, depending on which one you get. Um, I've used the Sigma just a little bit. Um, I use it for a couple of projects, and uh, it's pretty good. Uh, not as dead simple to use as the Ultimaker. What else have I used? And then the Lulzbot Mini I've used, which again... Uh, really, really great. Super simple to use. It's about twelve hundred bucks for the mini, and then uh, the Form Two, which is about thirty five hundred dollars. It's a magical, wonderful machine. Quite a great deal more expensive, and I would not recommend that for most prop and costume making applications, unless you have super high detail stuff to do, and you have the money to blow on it. Um. So I don't have a ton, and I've used the Anet A8, which is on the far end of the spectrum, which costs about $150, uh, which I can't recommend because it was a super pain to use. So that's kind of the spectrum that I've, like five or six printers I've, I've dabbled with. Um, if you check out Joel, the 3D printing nerd on YouTube, or Angus over at Maker's Muse, or Tom Sandlatterer, 
or the 3D Maker Noob. There's a bunch of people on YouTube who do just 3D printers. Like, Joel has, like, 30 of them at his house. Um, so, there's that. And then there are ton- so many more other options that we just haven't got to play with yet. And we never will, either, because I have... an ult- The Ultimaker, for me, does just about everything I need it to do, so I don't really have an incentive to try more. Uh, and, and our channel is not going to turn into a 3D printer review channel. Yeah, it's... Uh... It's kind of like the rest of the tools in our shop. We've only used a couple kinds of band saws, only used one kind of scroll saw, and we just don't have the time to try everything. So, like, I wouldn't necessarily know what a good beginner band saw is, but I could tell you about the ones that we have and how they work. But it's like, well, developing cosplay bought a house. That's awesome. Yeah, that's exciting. Well done. That's so cool. <laughs> So, um, some of the other options that are out there that I've heard about that are pretty good. Um, the Creality CR10 comes in at around 500 bucks, and it's pretty big and pretty good. People seem to like theirs. And then the Prusa i3 Mark II and Mark III, which is the new one, uh, are also getting really great reviews. Personally, if I was buying one right now, based on all the information I've heard, I would probably get the newest Prusa machine. Uh, assembled. I think it's around $900. And the main reason for that that I appreciate is that it's a company that's got a really good reputation, really good service, uh, because I don't want to spend time trying to fix a machine. I want to spend time using the machine. Yeah, that's just how our, our business works. We don't have time to tinker. Yeah. Uh, not right now. Anyway. We don't want to, we don't make videos about tinkering with 3D printers. Well, I made one or two, but that, I, I don't want to make any more. I want to make videos about making props potentially using a 3d printer so that's there there we go that's everything i know about 3d printers all in one go so again hopefully somewhere in there was a little nugget of information that would help you out (laughs) the the chat had a lot of good advice too so thank you guys awesome all right let's see here that came to us from jack's props uh next one is from kokiri cosplay when painting 3D printed props after prep, what are your favorite airbrush paints to use? Do you have some favorites, Britt? What did you use to paint Holly's helmet? I used all Kraytex paints. Um, they're all, all the ones that are thinned for an airbrush. So if you go to Amazon and look up Kraytex airbrush paints, uh, some of them are transparent and other ones are opaque. So you can get some really good layering effects. I used a lot of the pearlized ones, which were really neat. Uh, it, may, it has like a little bit of sparkle to them. This is createxcolors.com. Oh, yeah, there you go. And then this is all createx airbrush colors. So they've got wicked colors and pearlized and iridescent, opaque and fluorescent, and transparent. Know that if you buy the transparent and you're spraying it on and it's not covering, it's because you got the transparent one. The, the fluorescents also don't cover well. Right. Um, and that's. That's just how that is. Uh, they're, I think they're kind of like acrylics, but there's definitely some kind of solvent in them. They definitely have a smell to them. And they say on their bottles that you can set them with heat to make them more durable, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, uh, so you can use them on fabric and heat set them. Uh, so use a hair dryer, though, not a not a heat gun. They recommend putting it in the dryer as well. If it's um, clothing. Yeah, don't put your helmet in no. the dryer. I was, I was just thinking about how I use that for my uh, Assaultron. Yeah. Uh, but for 3D printed stuff... That's what I've done, um, but they um, I haven't tried their like metallics to try and get a real metallic look. So what do you like to use for, for those for airbrushing on 3D printed? I've been a big fan of um, uh, Tamiya Paints, TamiyaUSA.com. So uh, I believe these are actually, they say they're lacquer or acrylic, but they're like la- acrylic lacquers yeah again it's like a combination yeah. type thing but uh if we go to their website here and go to the paints you can see they have all kinds of crazy cool stuff um i like them because if i thin them with a t- I, you can thin them with a little bit of uh isopropyl alcohol and uh it, it sprays nice and smooth and dries really fast that's the main reason why i like them is because they dry really fast hey core geek is here hey buddy hey eric uh, they also have a ton of really awesome colors. Their metallics are nice. Um, they also have uh, transparent paints that work really awesome. So if you want, like like on my uh, 
blaster, my Blade Runner blaster, I put transparent red paint on where the LEDs are supposed to go, and they're they look kind of shiny like a red LED. Oh, and yeah, for the um, Ray's blaster for the bluing on the tip. Yeah, you use the blue. That was the right. That was yeah. You could use that. I for that one in particular, I used uh, all clad. All clad. Paints. Okay, but yes. But those transparent paints, there's a lot of cool effects you can do with those. And then they have flat paint, so flat black, which is really cool if you want to make something look charred, like a charred piece of metal, you can use the flat black paint, like the end of a barrel or an exhaust or something. Um, yeah, so there you go, Tamiya and uh, uh, Createx, those are two of our favorites. We like those a lot. Yeah. There are many, many other ones out there too, so feel free to experiment. Yeah, we tend to, um, we don't really like airbrushing with enamels. Uh, for one, they take a long time to, they, it's almost like they cure, but they take a long time to dry. Yep. Whatever the process is, it takes like a week before you can start masking and stuff. Um, and they they clog up our airbrushes. Like if they dry in there, it's like, ah, I can't get it out. So, they are a very much more durable finish though. It's There's true. Pros and cons to everything. Yeah, enamel I think is what used for like nail polish and mm -hmm. stuff. So it's it's very durable. So there you go, Kokiri cosplay. Some a couple of things for you to try out. And thank you for your question. Roland says, I've been using Rebound 25 and Mold Max 30 for a while, but I found Bill using Mold Star 22 for a tested project a while back, seeing as I don't have a vacuum tank and it's re and I'm really impatient. Seems nice, but I'm having problems finding a real pro con list. Okay, so Mold Star 20T is transparent. Now, here's the thing I don't quite understand is one of the reasons why I like 20T is that it cures in half an hour. It cures really fast. It's a platinum cure silicone, cures super, super fast, and it is kind of transparent. Kind of. Um, if they made a Mold Max that was transparent, I would just use that maybe. Uh, I don't know why it is both fast curing and transparent. I don't know if there's a reason, if there's a specific thing or industry that uses exactly that. Um, I was using it because Frank uh, uh, in a video was showing it off and I was like, cool, I want to try that. So I bought some and I've used it for a bunch of molds. I am currently all out of it and I don't really have a reason to buy more of it because I have a big jug of uh, mold, mold Max 30. I use that for almost everything. That's the pink molds. Just because it's a decent all around um, tin cure silicone. Yeah, Smooth Out tries to be good about kind of like differentiating what their materials are used for. So they'll use uh, T, it means transparent. They're, they've been coming out with NV and it's non-vacuum. Yeah. So they're very low viscosity. So there's now a, a like a, a Mold Max 29 NV um, that we haven't gotten to try yet. And, uh, um, but if you go to smooth on, it's smooth-on.com slash compare, you can put in different products and it will compare them. Yep. It's so cool. I've, I use that like once a week because I keep forgetting like, oh, what's a, the pot life of this thing compared to this thing? Where do we go to do that? Smoothon.com slash compare. It's not, I don't think they feature it on their main page. They also have like on their main page, you can find their, um, they can do volume estimations and like brush on estimations. So like you put in how big your thing is and it tries to estimate how much material you'll need. And I think that's super rad. Where's 20T? Hot Dragon Skin, Mold, Star, 20T. There we go. Yeah. And that's so, yeah. just, it's kind of fun. And like you can expand that to, be, to show more, I think, or something. Or technical data is down below, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, the cure time, 24 hours versus 30 minutes. Like that's a big one. The hardness, um, the 20T is a little bit softer. It's a translucent finish. Um, and other things that are important i guess so oh hey phoenix revival yeah so we have our prop tarts hanging out so there you go if you're curious about comparing different ones then head on over to smooth on's website and check that yeah. out yeah yeah because off the top of my head i can never remember <laughs> just right. and, and they try and be good because like they don't want people to accidentally buy the wrong thing so like i guess the mold max 29 uh like its properties are the same as mold max 30 but they don't want to call it the same thing because it's much lower viscosity, and sometimes you don't want that. Lower uh, viscosity um, when it's a liquid, but right. when it's cured, it's almost the same. The durometer yeah. is the same. Um, yeah. Roland's also curious why transparent might be important. 
Uh, depending on the mold you're making, um, it might be good to be able to see where it's how it's filling or how much it's how full it is. Um, I, that's never really been a problem for anything I've molded, but that might be again more applicable and in, for different industries that are using it. I don't know. Yeah, um, on Smoothon's website, they have a video. I think it and I think it's for the uh, the dragon skin NV. Um, it shows. I don't remember what they're molding, but it, it, it's you can see the inside of the mold, and they use a black resin, and it's important for them. It, it shows how far it's filling up, and there's like a void. They have to like uh, bump it around to make sure they don't get any bubbles. They can actually see that. Yeah. So that was really rad. Um, I I haven't needed that for anything yet, but it's good to know it's there. It, might, it would be neat for videos too, mm -hmm. just to be able to actually see it filling up. Yep. Uh, so thank you, Roland, for the question. Next one is from our buddy Hey Patch. He says, last week, people were asking about wall mounting props without damaging the wall. Have you ever thought of using your 3D printer to make the perfect bracket? I guess so. I don't know how you would attach that to the wall without poking a hole in the wall, though. It would be nice to um, be able to slot it on something that is already in the wall just to uh, fit a certain kind of prop. Because we yeah. have some weird shaped props. So I could see that helping the hooking system. Yeah. But it would still have to go into the wall. You know what we could do? is put up our put up a like a a sheet of plywood make, make go all frank howarth and make a make dovetails french cleats and make little french cleat 3d printed french cleat hooks that hook on for different props but that'd be awesome that'd be really cool have to, do, to do that at some someday oh about the silicone thing the the dragon skin they use that for actual prosthetics mm -hmm. so they tint it with their 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 sil pig yeah yeah so silicone that, pigment yeah so maybe not for molding as much as it's supposed to be for prosthetics. Right. Yeah. Cool. Anyway. Um, next question from Hey Patch. I'm planning on making a gnome stick from Turbo Kid. Uh, I'm planning on sculpting the gnome out of sponge. What would be the best way to go about that? Um, okay. This might be a UK thing. When you say sponge, do you mean cake? No, he's talking... Oh, wait. What was it? I wasn't paying attention sponge. to the question. He's sculpting the gnome out of sponge. Uh, he's talking about the upholstery foam. Okay, I that's think. sponge? Yeah. Okay. I think so, because he's brought that up before, how he found a bunch in a dumpster. A bunch of upholstery foam. Oh, yeah. I think I think that's what that also, is. Also, hey, Patch, can you confirm that sponge is also what they call some kinds of cake? I only know this because I watched the Great British Baking Show. Mm -hmm. So As long as there's no soggy bottom. No soggy bottoms. Um, sculpting a soft, uh, squishy foam could be pretty tricky. Um, I'm trying to think of what might be the best way to do that. Make a gnome out of it. I think he wants it to be squishy so he can bonk people with it. From what I've seen, when people make mascot costumes out of upholstery foam, they just use scissors and trim it down. Yeah. And then, um, cover it with fabric, which kind of smooths everything out. Like, they stretch fabric over it. Um, I've also seen them use, like, beard clippers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't tried it, though. We have a pair of old beard clippers, or beard clippers, in the shop, and I would like to try that, but I bet it makes a mess. Yeah. So... Um, I would personally, and this is a totally different way to do this, obviously, but I would sculpt it, mold it, and cast it in a flexible urethane foam. That's how I would do I it. I like the idea of having a squishy gnome, though, so you could, like, bonk people with it. Like your, your, uh, um, hammer, your mace you made last year. Yeah. The yeah. sulfurous, sulfuron. Yeah, actually, I did some sculpting in that using a hot knife, um, but it was supposed to look all craggly like rock, so it kind of looked okay, because it, it wasn't a clean line it was very melted into the surface <laughs> you see what hey patch said says they do have uh that type of cake and the foam is from his couch <laughs> you took it from your couch your couch is going to be very uncomfortable now uh ted says you can do it with the dremel so long as you have a very sharp blade it, oh it doesn't bind up on the on the bit. yeah so maybe if you can find a rotary tool bit that's super sharp i think we have i think some of those uh, came with our Fordham. They're the ones that have like wax on the end of them to keep mm -hmm. them safe in transit. Oh, other people are pointing out the turkey carver. Yeah, for, yeah, for, for doing like big cuts. Yeah. You get it down to, down to yeah. shape. So yeah, maybe a rotary tool with a really sharp thing. Thanks for chiming in, Ted. Excuse me. Thanks. And thanks, Hey Patch, for the question. Next one here. Cosplay Sidekick Creation says, will you be buying the new Prusa i3 Reg 3? 
Um, I don't really have a reason to buy it. I already have a couple of 3D printers and I might have uh, another printer on the way. I don't know yet. <laughs> so I don't really have a reason to buy yet another 3D printer. Um, we're not constantly printing stuff, so we don't really need extras. But uh, yeah, so I probably won't buy one. If anyone at Prusa wants to send us one so that we can try it out, that would be cool. Um, but again, we don't need more 3D printers right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't gotten to do any 3D printing in a while. Um, I want to. I've just been making stuff out of foam, though. It's, mm -hmm. I like using printers for small things or organic things um, or symmetrical things, and I haven't needed that too much lately. Next one comes to us from Shed Quarter Creations. Have you guys seen anyone use XTC, XTC 3D to strengthen and protect XPS foam? I guess uh, it wouldn't react poorly like epoxy. Well, it is an epoxy. Um, epoxies aren't going to ruin XPS foam. Um, uh, polyester resins will. So uh, fiberglass resin usually is polyester, and that will probably just melt right through your XPS foam. Um, Epsilon, also from SmoothOn, very similar to XTC 3D. In fact, uh, I have, I, I, I think that they're almost the same thing. I don't really know what the difference is between them. Let's compare them on the thing. But uh, yeah, Epsilon and Epsilon Pro are designed for working with foam. Um, XTC 3D will work just fine as well. Epoxy castings, is that what it's gonna be? Epoxy cast, Epsilon. Let's put Epsilon, normal Epsilon next to, um, where would XTC 3D go? There we go. Let's compare these. I'm linking DJ's channel to... Awesome. Let's see. Go. The only... The, the cure times are a little bit different. Um, the recoat times are a little bit different. Um, what else do we have here? Yeah, the ratios... Uh, doesn't say what the pot life of XCC is. But it's all pretty similar. The shore hardness is, is almost the same. Yeah, if you scroll down, it might say more. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Either way, though, they should they should all work. All of those epoxies should work on uh, your your XPS foam. No problem. I linked uh, uh, Jack's channel, YouTube channel, in the chat. He has been doing a lot of really big weapons lately. And one of the weapons he did, he covered in, I think it was Epsilon, but again, similar thing. Um, and it was XPS foam. And the neat thing for that is he hollowed out a lot of the foam so he could put lights in it. It was really neat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Thanks, Shed Quarters. Next question comes to us from Cosmic Flux. Are there any plans in the works to hold another in-person foam smithing class? That's something we do want to do again in the future. However, it's kind of low on the priority list right now. We have a handful of other things that we are working towards, big things, that will require a lot of work um but it's going to be stuff that will help our business grow for the next decade or two <laughs> like some more long-term things that we're trying to knock out in fact that's one of the main reasons um we're trying to not do a ton of traveling next year uh this year was kind of nuts even though at the beginning of this year i was like i shouldn't travel as much there was a stretch where in six weeks i went to seven cities that was too many cities to go to in six weeks um so this next year the theme is going to be grow the business which means we're going to be kind of turtling a bit we're going to and then or uh, we're going to form a cocoon <laughs> we're, we're a uh, and a little foam butterfly will yeah, come a little out foam later butterfly will fly out yeah um but uh hopefully after all that we will be much better prepared and equipped to run things like uh, like in-person uh, classes, which is something we definitely want to do. Yeah. It's just going to be a little while. We have to, we really have to lay the foundation to mm -hmm. make sure this whole thing doesn't come toppling down around our ears, which uh, there is no risk of that. We're doing okay. We just have big plans. Yeah. Yeah. And if we're, we're traveling a bunch of doing classes, we don't, and we're not in the shop 
figuring things out, then we'll just keep being the same. And yeah, and we want to we want to we want to help more people. So yeah. so um, icy chills is curious if we'll be visiting the UK again. Um, we want to, but it's all all of those things are kind of on hold until we get a few more things worked out. Mm-hmm. Um, but we want to. We want to do a whole Europe, UK tour. That would be super cool. Yeah. Go visit all our friends. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, next, that was Cosmic Flux. Thank you for the question. And Jordan wants to know, I'm making some bracers for Halloween and I painted them and I don't know what to use to seal the paint job. I've seen where you use spray lacquer, but I was hoping to know what brand you use or if that matters. Uh, I don't... I just don't want it to behave like spray paint crack and then screw everything up. Um, it's hard to go wrong with spray varnish. I like, I just personally like varnish mostly because it's flexible and it dries fast. There are two things that are important to me. You may have different priorities. Uh, you can get spray varnish at most craft or art stores in a spray paint can. You can also get it in a jar if you want to airbrush it. Totally. Or brush it on, you can just brushed on my hand um definitely follow the directions yeah. um on whatever the varnish says uh it usually needs to be a certain temperature so like you don't want to work in a really cold environment and there's a certain amount of time it takes to dry before you do a second coat and just like everything else uh let's see i'm looking up the specific varnish we use i'll throw that in the chat people in, in the chat are, are curious about more about what our big plans are uh we we'll let you guys know more when we have more to talk about we do everything is theoretical right now there's no not really much point in talking about it um i will say we are working on getting some merchandise some putish props and foam smith merch um i guess i can tell you guys i ordered some pencils some foam smith branded pencils oh it's so exciting yes we also have some stickers back there yeah we got another batch of stickers we got to figure out shipping and stuff and we'll put those all up on our website um, but we want to. We have a couple more products we're going to be adding in the store. Some some things we think are just really fun and useful things to have. Well, I want them. Yeah, like, we're going to get shirts. Like yeah. that's finally happening. I want a shirt. This, that's why we need shirts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that should be coming up soon. That'll be definitely in the store. All this stuff will be in the store before the holidays. We we, we got to make sure that that happens. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, but definitely pen. Like the pencils, I've already ordered them. They're on the way. I found a website. Okay, uh, I found a website where you can get just about anything branded. Uh, so like, like a, water, a water bottle. bottles, shirts, bags. We could get chip clips. That's chip clips. We could totally get punch props, chip clips. Uh, what else do we have? Let's do what's what's under technology. We should get something really absurd. Like a, a it's a phone charger. Oh, cell phone accessories. Nice. We can get phone cases. Uh, awesome. So, like, I could get an iPhone 4 case. So, here's the, the thing, though. You have to order uh, at least 50 of them. <laughs> and everyone has a different size phone. Yeah. That's silly. So, I mean, I just I just make, or have yeah. Bill make me vinyl stickers for my phone. So, that's that's what we got. But uh, we, could, we, uh, we were trying out the pencil thing. See how it goes. Yep. I'll, I'll at least have a bunch of pencils that I can yeah. use. So anyway, yeah, it's a, we're dipping our toe into this world. I didn't even know this was an option. So I got, like, the minimum order for pencils is 500. So I bought 500 pencils that say Foamsmith on them. I figured those would be something cool to keep around the shop and that you guys would like them. Punish props, branded sandpaper. Let's see if they have that sand. Oh man, paper. we were we were trying to find a good tape, oh, but they don't. I mean, they obviously have packing tape. It makes yeah. sense. A lot of people like Amazon branded, has their own packing tape. Branded but I want, packing like, tape is actually kind of expensive. A roll was like forty. Well, bucks. that's so that's um, because it was on uh, uh, the fancy one. Normal normal packing tape isn't that that bad, but I like I don't use packing tape in the shop that much. I would want I would no. want a tape that I use in the shop like duct tape or masking tape, and those ones are hard to find that are. Punish branded. props, Exacto blade covers. <laughs> uh, they don't have sandpaper. We should get punish props band aids. <laughs> oh my goodness! I don't know if they're available, but uh, that would be great. Bandage. I just put them on everything that's broken in the shop. 
What is adhesive bandage dispenser? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, but it's it's is it on the actual band aid? Tattoo bandages. There we go. And it can say something like it's just like that now. It's just like that now. <laughs> yeah. They have bandages. Punish props. It's just like that now. That's awesome. This is how we've been spending our evenings. <laughs> just Yeah. <laughs> Uh, safety scissors. <laughs> safety scissors. <laughs> I need safety scissors. I can't be trusted. <laughs> School for people who want to prop good and learn to do other things good too. That's so that's a Zoolander reference. So th- that's a, kind of us tiptoeing our, our way into the next kind of phase of what we do here and offering you guys some really fun stuff. Uh, the shirt thing will be happening soon. Uh, we're going to have Punish Props Academy shirts. I think that would be a cool thing for you guys. We're also going to have foam smith shirts. That's the plan right now. Mm-hmm. So those should be coming out soon. We got to talk to some people. And I have another I have another really cool, really awesome cool thing I'm putting together you guys are going to really like. Uh, but I'm not going to tell you what it is right now cuz that's how I roll. I'm excited about yeah. it. Something I want. Yeah. Uh, but part part of uh, part of moving forward is things like moving into a bigger shop that's something we've been wanting to do for a long time um we don't have any any plans uh set in motion yet um but that is definitely on the horizon it's something we want to do and the the priority there is so that we can have a bigger shop that we can outfit to film videos uh in a more efficient way so that we can get more better videos out to you guys that's that's the entire reason we could stay in this basement until our landlord kicks us out um, but we want some, we we want something a little better, a little safer, a little bit bigger, a little taller, a little, a little taller. Yeah, that'd be um, great. So I, again, if there th- that's really all there is to tell. There's not much else to 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 say about it. Once we have more information about it, then we'll definitely let you guys know. We're not being uh, sneaky just for just to be jerks. <laughs> Uh, all right. Thank you for the question, Cosmic Flux. <laughs> we kind of went out of a bend there. Um, hey, Patch says, another book is on its way. I have a couple of books in the works that I've been writing off and on for the last year or so. Um, but the the new project I have, which will be something hopefully available for the holidays, it's not a full-on book, but it's something similar. You're going to like it. Trust me. Okay. Uh, we have one more question. <laughs> uh, Jordan, wait. Nope, that was the last question. I'm sorry. Jordan, use spray lacquer or spray varnish. There we go. <laughs> that was that was the last question. Uh, cosplay sidekick is curious if we accept interns. We do not, uh, mostly because we work out of our basement and we don't usually invite strangers over. But. Uh... <laughs> I think that's it. I think we did. We I think we did a good job today, Britt. Mm-hmm. I think we I think we changed the world. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Awesome, fantastic prop tarts for hanging out with us today. Thanks for bringing your great questions. You guys are awesome. Uh, that's all we have. I think it's uh, about time to roll on out of here and have a light switch rave. <laughs> And go drink a bunch of birthday beers! Yay! Yay! <laughs> uh, again, we won't be here. Uh, we won't do the Q and A next week. We're going to take a break. We will be at BlizzCon. Hopefully, we see a bunch of you guys there. Ted will be there. Eric will be there. That's right. Yeah. Corgi's going to be there. Yeah. So uh, many awesome costumes are going to be there. Yes. I'm so excited to see everyone's costumes. Uh, Jackie's going to be there, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, she is. Jackie's been doing a bunch of videos on the virtual ticket. So if you have the virtual ticket for BlizzCon, go to BlizzCon.com and check out the videos there. See what Jordan's been up to over there. See what Jackie's been up to. Um, and also, go, just go follow Jackie Craft on Facebook so you can see the progress she's been making on her Farah costume. Is that it? Got it right. Yeah. And uh, that's it. That's all we have. We will try and live stream on Tuesday from the shop. We'll see. No promises, but we're going to try hard. That's it. Good job. We'll see you all in a couple weeks for another exciting episode of Prop see Life you guys. Q&A. Bye. Bye. Oh, meet up. Meet up at Matter Hackers. I'll end it on that. There's the information. Just take a screenshot. <laughs>